I hope you're all having a great week. So this week, I'm gonna be working on another neurographic art project. And this time I'm gonna do it using an app that I really like called Procreate. Now, I generally prefer to work on paper or canvas or other mediums uh, or other substrates, I should say. But every once in a while, I like to just chill on my couch and be creative but I don't wanna have to have a lot of tools to do it. So I'll pull out my tablet and my pencil or my stylus and I will work on my tablet. And I discovered this app called Procreate about a year, uh, maybe a year and a half ago or so. I wouldn't say I'm an expert at using Procreate just yet. I still have lots to learn about it, but I have um, discovered that it's a really great way to create simple little pieces of artwork, especially neurographic art, with just my tablet. And I can do so on the comfort of my couch. I don't have to worry about having any excess tools with me. And the app itself is actually very affordable. In terms of bang for my buck, Procreate was probably one of the best apps I've ever bought. And it's really fun to use it to create neurographic art. For this week, I'm gonna basically show you the step-by-steps on creating neurographic art using your tablet and a stylist and this app called Procreate. So enough about that. Let's get going and let's uh, create some neurographic art using Procreate. So first things first, we're gonna go to the top of our screen where there's a little plus sign, we're gonna click here. And in this case, I'm gonna create a square canvas, okay? Oh. The neat thing about Procreate is you can use your fingers to zoom in or out. You can use a variety of different brushes, different colors to do your work. Just make sure I have black. So I'm gonna go into my brushes and in this case, I'm gonna choose a calligraphy brush and I'm gonna choose my monoline brush there's a variety of different brushes that you can choose from, but I find that monoline is a good one uh, for neurographic art in particular. I like to shrink my canvas a little bit because I want to be able to make sure that my lines go completely out of the canvas and in and out of the canvas. So now you, I can adjust also the size of the brush. So to test this, you can just adjust it and then make a line and see if that's the kind of line you'd like. I think that's actually pretty good, but I don't like that line, so I'm gonna delete it. And to delete it, you just go into this section here and I just click on undo. So it's like the little reverse. If I wanted to redo it, I would click on the opposite arrow. As usual in neurographic art, you want to start off your canvas, create wavy lines that go that start from one end of your canvas then go off into another section and you want to try as much as possible not to repeat your lines so i'll start here then i'll go here i'm gonna go here And I'm gonna try to not make it too complicated, but um, I'll make one more line here and make it go out here. I am gonna now start rounding off my corners. And to do this, instead of working in a very small, like a, a shrunken down format, I'm actually gonna zoom in to make it easier for me to work with my stylus. So I'm gonna zoom in, I'll zoom in here and I'll start in this section here. And the more you zoom in, the easier it is to work, I find. Now, for this, I like to adjust my stylus again a little bit so that it doesn't go past these lines that I've made. And I try to go in the middle and then go in here. To color in this, I can just color it with my stylus like this or I can take the color and drag it into the section. Now you'll notice that when you do this, sometimes what happens is you'll see little sections that still haven't been colored in. So I can undo that. I can drag the color in again 
And before I let go, I can increase the threshold, which will eliminate those little white spots. And if I want to make sure that there's more color and that there aren't any white spots, I can still go in again and just color them in with my stylus like that. Okay, so that's one section. I'll do this one here. And then here, I don't like that line, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more just to make it easier for me. Like that. And then I'll zoom out and do this. So I can see little spots. I just like to go in and color them. Again, I'll zoom into another spot. I'll do this corner here. Then I drag my color in here and color in that little tiny spot. So here you'll notice that I dragged the color in and it didn't seem to really do anything. The reason that happened is because I wasn't really in the center of where I needed to color in. So in order to make it easier, I can zoom in, drag the color and then make sure I'm right in the middle and then the color goes in. Here I want to show you something that could happen if you're working, for instance, in a smaller, like if you're working in a smaller format and you're not 100% sure that your lines have connected, sometimes you'll have an issue that'll happen. So I'll just create here a little arc and I won't completely close it. When it's like this, it's hard to see that it's not completely closed, but if I were to drag color into here now, it would color in that whole entire section. And that's not really what I wanna do. So I'm gonna back out, back out again, and that back out some more zoom in again because you want to make sure that your lines are closed so again I'm going to go back in I'm going to repeat the line but this time I'm going to make sure it's completely closed and then I drag in the color but you also have erasers your eraser will basically be controlled by this little button here and again it's controlled by your brush library so it really depends on what you want to choose since you're working with a monoline brush, maybe you want to use a monoline eraser, but really that's up to you. It will have uh, different effects de depending on the type of eraser you use. I'm just going to choose monoline because that's what I'm working with. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to try to determine which size eraser I want. I'm going to use a pretty small eraser here. So what I want to do is correct here. There's like a little tiny thing. It's not a huge thing, but I want to just change that. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to straighten that out. I'll go back to my monoline brush and I'll keep working. So now that we've created our basic neurographic art background, I guess is what you could call it, which I think already looks really cool. I like, I like this uh, in black and white. It's so neat. We're going to go ahead and add some circles. So I'm going to go into my layers. This, uh, these little two squares that are one on top of the other are called your layers. So on my first layer, I created this. Again, we're gonna keep this pretty simple because this is a, um, a neurographic art tutorial and it's, it's really not about making things complicated but really trying to make them as simple as possible so that you can just focus on having fun, being mindful and re relaxing. Here I'm duplicating the first layer I created by simply clicking on layer number one, sliding it to the left, and then clicking on duplicate. To rename this layer, I tap on its title, select rename, scratch out the number one, and I write in the number two. So a couple of things that we want to make sure we're working on layer two. If you hold your, the tip of your stylus down after you're done drawing your circle and that you've um, touch the two ends of your lines together. See what happens. So it automatically created a shape. 
you can either create keep that shape or you can edit that shape by just clicking on the top bar that shows up and I can click on circle to turn it into a circle. I can move these to change the shape of my circle. I can also move the circle anywhere I want in on here. So that actually looks like a pretty good place to put it. So I'm going to put that first circle there. So I'm going to create another circle. Okay. Oh, that's actually pretty good. I'm going to make sure it's a circle completely. It looks a tiny bit bigger. I like that. I want to move it. Let's see, I'll move it right here. Same process as before. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to use my stylus. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more maybe and I'm going to color in my lines. So, do that. We're ready. To move on to the next step. The next thing we're going to do is start adding color. You can leave it like this if you like. I think it looks really cool and really pretty, but there's something very therapeutic about coloring. Um, it Colors tend to reflect our moods. If we're feeling happy, we tend to choose bright, bold colors. When we're feeling a little bit down, we might tend to lean more towards cooler blues. Um, so color really has an effect on our mood and and how we view life, I guess. And so coloring can be another added therapeutic step to this whole process. So I'm gonna show you a way to do it using Procreate that is actually a lot of fun and you can play with this and you know, you could do a lot of different things, a lot more than we'll actually cover today, but I'll show you the basics of what you can do. First things first, we're gonna create another layer. So we're gonna slide our scale to the left. We're gonna clip on duplicate. Now, instead of working with black, we wanna work with color. To start off, I am going to use this blue. So notice how when I click on the color here, it changes the color of my brush here. So if I click on this, all of a sudden my brush is a more purpley color. I can drag the color and it will completely fill a spot. If I unclick this and I go down, you'll see that layer one, if I've unclicked these two things here, you don't know at all what has been done on layer two and layer three. If I click on this, then all of a sudden the circles that I added start to show. And then if I click here and select layer three, the colors that I've added start to show. So in this case, I'm really keeping my, my layers pretty separate so that if I want to change something or if I want to completely delete a layer, I can go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go back to layer three to make sure that this is the layer I'm working on. And now I'm going to, let's see, one, two, three, four. Maybe I'll add another section of that teal here. Now I'm going to go into my color palette and I'm going to add this color. So I've selected it with my brush. Now I can go in and start adding it. adding this color here see what that will look like and go in here and all up here all right
I think this looks really neat as it is, but sometimes I add, I like to add a little bit of white. White contrasts against the black and it makes it even more interesting, I guess, to look at. So to do this, I'll again duplicate this layer. I'll change the name of this layer to layer four. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose white. A color, I'll probably use the monoline again. All right. And In neurographic art, we're repeating a lot of different steps. You know, the whole rounding off of the sharp edges, that's something we do repetitively. When I do this dotting, this little white dotting step, that's also very repetitive. And repetitive processes like this, there's something relaxing about creating these little dots. To adjust the size of your dots, simply move the size scale up or down. But this right there is our completed little neurographic art piece. If you want to save it, you can go on here, that little wrench looking thing. You can click on share and you can choose different ways of sharing it. Another cool thing is that you can actually see every single thing you did from beginning to end. There's a little time-lapse replay tool if you click on video and it'll show the whole process being replayed to you. And that in itself is kind of fun to watch. To be honest, I, I really enjoy that too. There's something very validating about this process uh, and watching it kind of unfold in your eyes and realizing that this is what you did. You created this thing and uh, it's a lot of fun. Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them. I'm always happy to answer questions or to see any of your comments. It's always a pleasure for me to engage with you. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, video and I will look forward to connecting with you again next week. Have a great week and happy creating.